Yes, Halloween board games. I should go through the video games too, see what like Halloweeny type stuff. Um, so I leaned into the horror game selection stuff, and one of the ones I found right away is One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Um, of course, Werewolf, the classic uh, deduction game, and this one is one that be play that's played in one night. So there's an app that you can use to moderate the whole game. Uh, it's pretty much Werewolf, except there's o it's only one round, and you're just trying to find the werewolf right away. Uh, we've played this once or twice, and then I actually lost it for a few years. <laughs> it was Steph's copy. I had it for a couple years, lost it, and I felt really bad about it. And then it turned up in a bag years later. So, I don't know. Maybe that's... We should play this then, this Halloween, just to... Uh, uh, celebrate getting this back. I've never played Werewolf myself, but I've been at parties where it was played. Destiny really likes it. Yeah, w this was okay. I've seen, like, more involved games of Werewolf, and it seems like a lot of fun. This one was cool, but it's very short. Like, five-minute game, and then it's just, like, over. Like, if you just want that super quick fix, but, um... Actual Werewolf, I think, would be a little more interesting IMO. Uh, here's one I have not played at all. Actually, my, my track record with these games is not great, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, this one is Elder Sign, which is sort of a spin-off of... Oh, dude. Eldritch Horror? Eldritch Horror? Eldrick? Eldrick Horror! And this one's a little more of a dice-based game, and I have not played this. I, I bought this... Oh, Arkham Horror! That's it! Arkham Horror is the game it was based on. Or a spin-off of. Um, I bought this because my friend Carol, shout out to Carol, she said this was an amazing game. And I found it at a university uh, university geek sale. Someone was selling it for under 20 bucks, and this game usually goes for like 40 Canadian. So I was like, yeah, I'll pick this up. And then we just never got around to playing it. But it is here. I do have it. At some point, I will I will play it, probably. Two more games, and then maybe I'll try and figure out how to get to the seventh dungeon. Maybe not. Um, here's one that I've only played once, which is a shame because it does have a full campaign. Uh, and it looks really nice. It's got miniatures. Uh, the Ghostbusters board game. This is one where each of the players plays as... Um, yeah, one of the four classic Ghostbusters, um, Peter, Egon, Winston, and Ray, and you're working through maps, and there's there's ghosts all over the place, there's a Stay Puff, there's a Stay Puff Marshmallow Man miniature in here. Let's go pull that out. I think there's a Stay Puff Marshmallow Man miniature in there, there's a ton of ghosts, I see the four different Ghostbusters here, am I, oh yeah, there it is. Yes, so probably the bi the big selling point. It's got the Marshmallow Man, which shows up horribly on camera here, but it is it just looks like a blob. I need to fix the lights to be better at showing stuff on screen. But yes, it's a Marshmallow Man miniature. It looks very nice. Uh, we've only played it once, and it was fun. And I don't think you need a DM for this either. I think it's just the, the game gives you logic for... Um, how you should move the enemies around the map. Yeah, someone bleached the poor guy. <laughs> yeah, this is true. I haven't painted them yet. Well, I, I, mm -hmm. I have no skills in that, that department. Maybe I should send them over to Jason and he can paint them for me. And one more game that I've played a couple times that is probably the most Halloween of them all is Dead of Winter. This one is a very cool game where it's the zombie apocalypse. It's sort of like The Walking Dead, if it were a board game, and you're trying to manage your um, the different characters in the world, um, manage scavenge for supplies, and the cool thing about it is you have this mission card, which is like the primary thing you're trying to do. But then on top of that, there's this deck of like story moment cards that may or may not trigger depending on circumstances in the game. And it, it pretty much dynamically changes the story as you're playing the game. So even though you've got, like, one master objective, there's a lot of different story beats that can happen in between that really mix things up. 
and so it makes this one really cool. This is actually, it's tough to play though, because there's so many different variables, different locations, a lot of weird rules and things to manage. Um, but it is a lot of fun when we have played it and put in the work to like actually get it going. It's a lot of fun. I'm still mad at my sister-in-law, Michelle, who sabotaged our group. She got, yeah, so there's a chance also of a traitor being in the group. And she totally sabotaged us by getting, hoarding all the supplies and not sharing with the group. And so she ended up winning. We all lost. And I'm still bitter about that. You should follow her on Instagram, though, at Copper Key Cosplay. Uh, not Copper Key Cosplay. Uh, at Mishi Made It. M-I-C-H-I-M-A-D-E-I-T. 